There it is. My 1979 Hurst Olds. I've owned this car since June of 2013. I purchased it from a gentleman who had owned it for over 30 years. Previous owner took very good care of this car. It was garage kept at all times. It was never driven during the winter time. It has not seen snow. It is a 100% rust free, unmolested, all original factory T top 1979 Hearst Olds. Exact car I've been looking for. Unfortunately, I was never able to find this car locally in this condition. I had to bring this car in from quite a distance. And that required that the car be shipped to me. I've never shipped a car before. I wasn't sure of how that would go, but you see cars on the backs of tractor trailers every day being shipped around the country, so certainly it's something that gets done and gets done without issue. So I wasn't too concerned. The only thing I made sure of is that the shipping company had proper cargo insurance in case anything did happen to my car, they'd be covered by insurance. So I got a call on a Monday morning. 6.23 a.m. letting me know that my car was in Mooresville, North Carolina. They were loading it onto a single car carrier and they'd bring me the car. I should have it within a couple of hours. Now that was really good news because we had 100 percent chance of rain for the afternoon and I really wanted to get this car in the garage before the rains came. So for the next six hours I wait for my car. No sign of Auto Movers LLC, no calls, no word, no nothing until 12.42 p.m. I receive a call from Auto Movers LLC letting me know that they were just now leaving Mooresville, North Carolina and I should have the car within a couple of hours. Unfortunately for me that meant the car would arrive in the pouring rain. Now, I hate to be so cynical, but when you hear the rest of the story, you might conclude as well that the shipping company needed to have this car delivered in the pouring rain. One thing that a wet car will do will disguise damage caused by leaking brake fluid it is very difficult to tell the difference between water beating on a freshly waxed car and paint that is bubbling because it has had brake fluid dripped on it during its shipping process. I signed for the car. We went over where there might be dents and dings on the condition report. I did not see any new dents and dings, therefore I signed for the car. I immediately got the car into the garage and began to dry the car off and that's where the troubles began. My drying cloth was covered with an oily residue pretty quickly and there was also this gummy substance which I later figured out was paint and clear coat which was peeling off of the car. There is a line of damage all on the trunk deck, the roof, and the hood of this car directly below where a master cylinder would be on the car above. I immediately called Auto Movers LLC to let them know what I discovered. I left them a message. They never returned that call or any of the other calls that I've placed since then. So the next day I called their insurance agent. At least the car was insured. They had cargo insurance. That's really all I needed to get this car fixed. So I talked to the agent. I told her what had happened to my car. That brake fluid had leaked from a car above or truck and the paint was bubbling and peeling off of my car. The agent said she would need to speak with her client and that she would get back to me shortly. I received a call from the agent within an hour of that conversation. 
she informed me that she had talked to the owner of Auto Movers LLC and that he had informed her that this car, my Hearst Olds, had spent its entire journey on the top of his carrier and that there was no way that fluid could have leaked from a car above seeing how there was never a car above mine. So she informed me that there would not be any action taken upon my claim. I immediately called the previous owner of the car. I didn't tell him about any damage that occurred during shipping. I just asked what he had witnessed, where the car had been loaded, and where was the car when it left his driveway. He was 100% certain that he had seen the car loaded on the bottom of the carrier and that other cars were already above this car on the carrier when it left his possession. So I relayed that information to the insurance agent for Auto Movers LLC and a claim was filed on my behalf that was five months ago. There's been no action on my claim whatsoever other than the fact that I will say an independent adjuster, they did hire a third party adjuster to come and inspect my car. He actually found a lot more damage than I did. He certainly knew what he's doing and he's probably seen this before. But he was pretty certain that the damage was all in a straight line right underneath where a master cylinder would be on a car above and that the paint bubbling was was very gel like and so it was very recent damage and there was a spray pattern that demonstrated that the vehicle had to be moving while this fluid was leaking on it it all pretty much added up to exactly what I suspected happened and that's that this car had another vehicle above it that was leaking brake fluid from the master cylinder and that is what has caused all of this damage to the paint. Now, that was the last bit of good news. It's now been close to five months later. They assigned, the insurance company assigned their own adjuster to work my claim. Um, the position of this adjuster has been that I should file a claim with my insurance carrier because there is no proof that his client did anything wrong and that we cannot prove that this damage happened while on the carrier. Now, all I can say is we certainly would like someone else to pay our bills. So I can't really blame them for trying, I guess. It's kind of like going next door and seeing if your neighbor will pay your mortgage. You know, it might work, who knows. But it's not a very ethical way to go about business. Um, it's a very reliable business model to take in premiums, to assume risk, and then when something happens, just get the damaged party to file a claim with their insurance. I mean, who can't make money with that business model? It just, uh, like I said, doesn't seem very ethical. But if you can live with it, I guess it's worth a shot. Uh, I wouldn't want to meet my maker having operated that way, but that's on them, it's not on me. So here we are again five months later, no action on my claim, denying that it could have happened the way that I describe it, and recommending that I seek recourse through my insurance company, which I refuse to do. It's not their responsibility. I certainly pay them premiums to assume risk, but this was not their risk to assume. This risk belonged to Westchester Fire Insurance, part of the ACE group. So, again, I'm making this video for a couple of reasons. Number one, I hope that you will learn something from my experience, that you will never sign for a car in the rain, that you will inspect a vehicle for any damage caused by leaking fluids when you receive your vehicle, I cannot recommend the services of Auto Movers LLC. It's not because of damage that occurred to my car. That could happen with any shipping company. 
It's because of the fact that they've been less than truthful about how it happened and they have never returned my phone calls and they've just been totally uncooperative. Um, my other piece of advice to you would be obviously make sure that the company you choose has cargo insurance. If that cargo insurance happens to be Westchester or any insurance associated with the ACE group, I would highly recommend that you look for another shipping company. It's been my experience that these folks do not pay out claims when your car is damaged during shipping. Uh, that would be my other piece of advice. And then my other reason for making this video is to hopefully shame the folks at Auto Movers LLC and the folks at Westchester Fire slash Ace Group into doing the right thing. We know how this damage happened to my car. The first adjuster was very clear. He's a professional and he knows what he's doing. The right thing to do is to fix this car. Again, I'm not saying that Auto Movers LLC did this intentionally. I know they didn't. It's the kind of thing that can happen when you ship cars. That's why you have insurance. All I'm asking is that this car be restored to the condition it was in just moments before being loaded onto the carrier of Auto Movers LLC. I'm not asking that this car be repainted fully and to look like it came off the showroom floor. I just want the car in the condition it was in when they picked it up and put it on their carrier. That's the right thing to do. So I'm going to get a shot here of the parties involved. This is the shipping company their information and then we've got the adjuster and their information again I would like to think these folks would do the right thing but so far they haven't perhaps a little bit of public humiliation Perhaps they care a little bit about their reputations to cause them to move, to do the right thing. I'm not going to ask, but if you were so moved to send a text or an email to these parties, then it couldn't hurt. All of you G-body enthusiasts out there, people who love Hearst Olds, people who love old cars, or just people who think that you should do the right thing, um, I guess we could get some movement by these parties if they got enough text and emails. So, thank you for watching. I hope this video helps someone, and I hope they fix my car. Thanks.